six to order. And as always, we start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Thompson, would you read this, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We're a little short on council members tonight. We do have a quorum. This is exactly the number we have to have to conduct the meeting. So Harry, you're lucky. You don't have to come back. Uh, did uh, you all have a chance to read the uh, minutes from the August 22nd meeting? Do I have any additions or corrections? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Okay. Moved second. by uh, Brian and seconded by Karen. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Four to nothing. Thank you very much. Board of Public Works and Safety uh, met on August the 17th and 31st, and those minutes are included in your packet for information and purposes. Uh, new business, and Harry, we're going to put you up first uh, for the downtown partnership benches and racks. Okay, oh, great. I even go ahead and trick or treat it. Would you introduce yourself for the, uh, sure. for the record, please? My name is Harry Webb, and I'm here representing uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership. I'm the chairman of the design committee, and we're really here today to just kind of talk to you about the uh, bench and bike rack project that uh, we've been kind of working on for most of the year. Um, just kind of giving a little bit of back history of RDP and the processes we've gone through over the last probably 15 years. Um, you know, several times the city has paid for consultants to write, uh, write up, um, do studies to talk about how to improve our downtown. And uh, there's been three of them done in, in, since I've been in the community. And those have been uh, great tools used to help apply for home run projects to do downtown renovations of one type or another, applying for different grants. Um, to this point, we've been unsuccessful in, in hitting that home run. We've got close several times. Uh, but about three years ago, the, uh, the, one of the lacking things was that we needed to form a, the formation of uh, a, main, a certifiable, full-fledged Main Street organization. And so that is where Rochester Downtown Partnership was born. Uh, and it is a um, four-tiered organization. You guys get reports on, on monthly meetings. But, the design committee is basically the committee that works on the, the look and feel. And as we have as we grow as an organization, as we try to get um, revenue, and we have now formed, a, you know, we are now a 501c3, we're moving forward, we have a very active board. Um, but we've decided that it was important to maybe take on some of these little projects that were part of the overall big picture and do some things that we can do so when we do apply for the large projects the city can demonstrate that it's not just creating a plan but it's trying to execute it as much as possible so the downtown amenities are um, is, are part of that and one of the things is the bike racks and the benches um, we uh, had three years ago actually when Diane Spore was chairman of the ch chamber in the RDP um, she won a uh, bike rack at a, a, by attending a meeting. She went to this Rose Designs as a company that um, can do them. And that replica there, so we went through the process of designing what we wanted. And so um, this was a 3D uh, that is made of uh, cast aluminum. And it has the logo that's part of the sign that's out now down on uh, the east end of town that incorporates the courthouse and some of the downtown look. It's kind of hard to put it in stamped metal, but it still gives it a unique thing. And of course, this is a rack that can be mounted and a bicycle can be put on either side of it um, or, or multiple bicycles. So it does have the function of being a bike rack, but it's also an ornamental piece. Uh, very expensive 
the company that does that you know, is quoted over $500 to, to make them. And so we took that bike or bike rack to um, Craig Welding and said, can you do this? And they can, and they can do it um, relatively inexpensive. They've given us a quote of $130 per um, rack. And uh, then we're gonna use modern materials to powder coat it. That's around $50 to powder coat them. And, um, and then we've got uh, Fastenal to give us a really good price on all the fasteners we need to mount it into the concrete. So they're giving us that basically at their cost. Mm -hmm. So we're roughly at $200 a bike rack versus 500 some is what the price was. You know what would really be neat? If the, uh, if Chris and the folks out making our, our bike racks up could make <clears> them <throat> similar or in at least a similar design as the uh, fence around Centennial Park so that it kind of matched the color and everything. Oh yeah, I think they are going to be black. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, this one was bronze, but we we've decided on a black. I think it's easier to match black too. You know, I think if you sit oh, there sure. and think about future lamp posts, benches, um, the I can't the, the fence. Up with that idea. <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot easier <laughs> to match black, black than yeah. that. So um, yeah, we're going to do them in a in a black powder coat. Great. Um, so we were about ready to launch that, and they said, well, you know, probably we ought to um, do benches at the same time. So we did, went back to the table and went through the plans and figured out which bench we liked, and we kind of settled on this style um, bench. It's, uh, we approached three or four different vendors and got quotes of different bench, benches, but this particular bench is actually made in Silver Lake. Um, at a company, and, they, and they, the same company made all the benches that's currently on the Nickel Plate Trail. It's Wabash Valley, I believe, is the is the name of them, and uh, those are expensive. We this is actually it's made, it's made to look like wood, but this is actually metal. The bench is metal with a uh, a coating on there to make it look like wood, so it should be durable. And I don't know if you've really paid attention to the benches we currently have in our downtown, but they're disgraceful. I mean, they are just old. I mean, I don't know how old they are. They're probably beat my time. I moved here in 84 and was on the board of works. I know we never replaced benches. And um, so I know they're at least 20, 25 years old and there's only a few uh, and their boards are worked on them and they definitely are not very presentable. So the goal was to then think about where would we want to put them and um, looking in other communities, how they do it, they usually you know, we are trying to make the community more bike friendly. We are bringing the Nickel Plate uh, Trail into downtown. Um, there is gonna be more bike traffic. So the thought was that we should probably put a, a bike and a bench combination a lot of times, especially at the restaurants uh, where people can, uh, where people are gathering outside before they go in and things like that, or maybe they ride their bike in to go to a restaurant. So with that in mind, we um, took some of the current locations where uh, bike racks, and benches were, and we just kind of mapped out uh, the town and figured out how many would be a, I guess, ideal or dream uh, project for how many we would need. And the number actually came in a much higher than we initially thought. The number is like 17, um, 17 benches and 22 bike racks. And the potential of maybe an additional four, because at this point we have not put any at the theater, and that didn't have one for uncorked, because uncorked didn't exist when we were doing it. So um, we definitely want every restaurant to have a bench and a bike rack. The courthouse square would have uh, five of them, um, and the courthouse uh, commissioners have already um, approved that, and I. Josh Shriver was going to present it to the council. I haven't heard the final on that, but it seemed very favorable that they were going to allocate thus the money to do the bike racks and the benches around the courthouse square. There would be... Um, that may have changed. <laughs> they might have. But, uh, well, I'm hoping that uh, they have money in their uh, maintenance fund from the courthouse that they can use for that, and they think they can just escrow it off. If we don't get to it this year, we'll be able to at least allocate it for... Um, for next year from this year's fund. So um, 
and uh, we've also presented this briefly to the community foundation and they could also be a source of funds but all that being said i'd like to see what the you know if the city would be willing to um, fund some of that and pull it out of some magic hat um, that from this year if there's any fund that's available either the council's fund or wherever if there's something that's not been fully spent it'd be nice that if we could at least escrow the money and uh, allocate it for um, updating our bike racks and benches there is a um, just a brief little excel spreadsheet that i included that basically breaks down the cost um, we're still working on getting that bench price down um, but it's it, right now they currently stand at $1,122 a bench. Um, these will be uh, fastened to the uh, concrete and they're going to be doing that with some local service clubs to do that so it shouldn't cost us any labor to install these things. Is it $1,000 a bench? $1,000 a bench. And we've quoted and that falls in line with some other vendors the nice thing about Silver Lake is we can go get them. We can save well over a thousand dollars in shipping costs by just you know going and get the, getting them ourselves. Um, you can go wood and save money. You know you, the wooden benches start probably anywhere from six to seven hundred dollars. You also have a composite material that's made out of recycled materials and stuff. But I don't think it really gives us the look we want for. Um, you know, more of a historic area. I didn't really want to go with anything too modernistic. We wanted to kind of have something that looked more traditional. And so that's kind of um, why we decided on the, the particular bench we've, we've gone with. Do they have a warranty on the bench? Then? Good question. I did print out ex everything we received from the vendor including all kinds of possible color options. You should have about an eight page handout there. Um, we are um, going to try to position them with the bike rack so they don't become rails for skateboards. You know, we don't want them to be hopped up on and, and scratched up. I think a combination of positioning them near a tree with a bike rack will greatly diminish that. Shout I know we have uh, talked about this a, a little bit before, but do do we have available funds in, in any? Our funds yet this year? I think, in the, I, think um, I would have to pull from a couple of different sources, but uh, what would, Harry, what was the final total on what's left? Well, if we don't go to the foundation, it's around $17,000, 17064 with the current number. I think we're going to still get that bench number down some. Um, but, and we don't have to do 17, but you know, it, it's, I think if there's some economy of scale in buying them, you know, might, might save a little bit by getting them, but we don't necessarily have to put all 17 up, and I'd be happy to go through the details of what we came up with, but um, the short answer, I think, and the foundation was going to, what percentage was that? They were going to, it was a... The community foundation? Yes. Well, I, we haven't presented anything to them yet. Uh, we've talked about it in just general terms. They said bring us a project and we'll we'll apply right. for it. So, but that would you know, be, if if we were to apply and be awarded that, what would that look like? You know, I th I think you could probably get seven to ten thousand dollars from the from the community foundation. So maximum but the city would be looking at would be seventeen, maybe less. Seventeen if we don't go to the foundation. Right. So that would be the maximum. So to answer your question, I think I we I would be I said I might have to pull from a different couple different sources but I think we could probably do it because I believe the council budget will have some remaining that we hadn't spent but I will need to definitely look at the numbers for sure but I believe we can do it and about six grand would come from the county yeah 6700 
Sixty-six hundred and ten dollars oh. is their their was that portion. Was seventeen? No. That was. Um, oh. be I don't think I gave 17. you a copy of this, but oh, you. Yeah. you here's the, I think I have it somewhere. Piece of. But there's a total. Here's a city. Here's a county. Okay. If if we go with everything from the city, if we get and then whatever. Okay. Okay. You know, five thousand, ten thousand, seventeen thousand are all acceptable numbers. <laughs> and kind of depending too on when when you guys order these versus when we're going to be doing payment for them because one of the things like you alluded to uh, we could actually do uh, if, the, if we get invoiced in December then I could also take and encumber some of that funding from this year and apply it to 2018 and then the final product would be done and we would pay for it out of the final budget of 18. So that's another, which would cushion a little bit to the end of this year, because I don't, I, I would venture to say that would they have the summit, have all the benches done and bike racks done before the end of this year? I, I doubt it. Well, we can certainly get them invoiced. Okay. Yeah, if we can get a purchase order and invoice in in December, that I could pay it out, then I could encumber uh, money from this year and put it towards and then pay it out in January, February for the final. Usually willing to supply invoices. <laughs> we should we should be able to get an invoice. <clears throat> and it would pass through the RDP. You know, we can the RDP could possibly invoice the city and <coughs> and then use that those funds for you know if it's not the exact amount we can get close and. Especially Cover. since you're still negotiating on those costs for the I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a separate topic, but, you know, what we'd like to do maybe moving forward into the, the 2018 <coughs> year, instead of coming to the city for every little project we want to do, we would like to um, get the city's commitment to RDP in some, um, some form of a annual support or dues or whatever, similar to what they do currently with um, the dog shelter, you know, the um, Humane Society, and the um, Council, on Aging. Council on Aging. They get a blanket amount in the budget every year. You know, it'd be something that I would like this council to think about. And then we can, and we're also going to be start soliciting dues from obviously a lot of businesses throughout the community. They're going to be very supportive, hopefully. And we'd like to get to the point where we can just fund projects from that money and not have to say okay it's time to buy you know if we want to buy another bench we don't have to come back to you and buy it you know and present it we can just allocate it from our own funds so um, and then be reporting give you an you know report back to the council based on what we are spending the money on but So with lack of not knowing the dollar amount, is there any point? That was what I needed. I just needed the final, the 17064 And like I said, I, I'll have to crunch the numbers again and, and just double check it. But from looking at them from last month to this month, I would think we would be able to come up with that. I just might have to, like I said, pull from a couple different areas. Um, I do have, no, maybe not. Short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> council, thoughts? My thoughts, it's like what Mr. Webb was saying that nothing has been done for 50 or 20 years. So the, like there's an obligation for, from the city to replace what's there and upgrade and you know get things more inviting for people who are coming downtown. So I would be in favor of all or, or some whatever we're looking at. If we get matching from the foundation or something from, from, from the foundation as well, uh, then that would certainly help. I would assume they'd have some kind of warranty as well and I think the metal benches would definitely be a better way to go than the, uh, the wood ones. So I found the favor of it as well. 
far as long term maintenance, hopefully, I think it would be, you know, if you look, when the ones we have downtown now have never been stained or painted. And, and it might look better if they were, but now they're too far gone to even worry about it. How many do we have downtown? Do you have any idea? Oh, there's probably six or eight. Yeah, I didn't think there were a whole lot. You know, there's a couple by Bailey's, there's a couple around the courthouse now. Um, there's I think we lost maybe some one by down by over the years that oh, yeah. just mm -hmm. got too bad to keep mm -hmm. pitched. I think, yeah. just threw, I think, I, I think probably the last thing that the years. town the city has bought for the downtown was probably the flower planters and uh, and the trash cans. You know they provided those, which that's next on the list, but uh, <laughs> that's another day. <laughs> Which is why you need the fund to right. yeah. do the other. Is there a value or a dollar amount that you guys are thinking about in the budget or wanting in the budget? Give till it hurts is what I would say. <laughs> 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 well, it's like you know, it's whatever you put in there will be spent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, yeah. Well, how, whatever the whatever the city is willing to commit to the downtown is the number we're really looking for, and I know that's a going to be a point of discussion as it should be but um, it would be nice to have um, we there's a lot that can be done with that money there's already a lot of positive momentum it's oh. only going to continue oh one place is is web structure <laughs> doesn't look like positive right well, now well did I catch you on the back Harry that is not a cheap project no it's a, lot of money. it's a lot of money you're investing in your community appreciate that yeah it's exciting every time I drive by. There's something different. That's <laughs> been a bigger hole. Bigger hole. Bigger, bigger hole in the wall. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's kind of neat to see what's underneath all that. We are actually meeting with the Okra representative on Tuesday to um, discuss. There's a, there is a facade renovation grant at, at, through through Okra that would be a a major project fund where we could get up to a half a million dollars for 10 to 15 projects and only two communities were awarded last time and only three applied so they they say we are high on the list for a potential grant for that so if we can put together 10 well, to 15 nice. how, 10 how do they uh, advertise that to everybody huh? <laughs> <laughs> they have to, they, but you know my architect is the one who works with the one of the communities that got it this last year, and she's coming with this Oprah guy. So um, that well, we're going to find out the details. It's going to take a lot of work to to apply because you have to kind of develop ten to fifteen projects. But you know the theater is screaming for it. You know we can, might be able to take care of the marquee and the facade oh, of the wonderful. theater, and yeah. maybe take on several other key buildings. That's eighty percent funded so that the building owner is only a 20% match so that could fund a lot so would you be looking for something similar say if, if, if the city saw, saw fit to encumber approximately $17,000 for this year's investment into this for, for the uh, bike racks and the benches that if we would then make a commitment for on a yearly basis uh, you would then want approximately that same amount of money possibly I know you said you yeah I mean money, I think that would be a very similar a very similar amount? number somewhere yeah a ten to twenty thousand dollar commitment from the city and um, we could do a lot with that because we aren't going to just be relying on city funds this is going to be we're going we are in the process of working on a new structure as well to get um, you know businesses in the downtown and in the community to to help us on an annual basis. So, you know, Smith Sergeant Smith can expect a letter soon. Well, <laughs> um, say we were to make that commitment, then would they then have their own line item each year uh, budgetarily for that? They'd have or to, they'd would have they go under something? Okay. Much like the uh, Area Planning Commission folks would have to have their budget audited. Uh, and then the animal shelter, they fall under the, the tent then of the. Uh, the audit purposes. Uh, I just, my first reaction, this is the first I've seen them and such, and I got a little sticker shock on a thousand dollar bench. Uh, yeah. you, rather than jump in, can we put a toe in the water and go with 
half of that many to see how they work out. Uh, <laughs> some way we can gradually move into it rather than yep. 17 hit us all at one time. Yep, like I say, this was a wish list. It wasn't yeah. a, a demand. It was a, if we wanted to do them everywhere, where would we put them? I see. Um, okay. Right. So there's obviously going to be people say, well, why didn't I get a bench? But, you know, <laughs> that's the process. It's a, just trying to figure out where they, I mean, I think every restaurant needs, mm -hmm. needs one. Absolutely. Every restaurant needs one. And, um, you know, the clinic has got one for, you know, people that come out of the clinic and call for the minibus. They need a place to sit. Um, that, that type of thing is the, is the mindset behind it is where people got, you always see somebody sitting in the bench on the courthouse lawns. You know, there's, those are common. Um, well, I assume you've done that study. You we actually did not the put them down at the corner there. because we felt if down at the corner, I think we have we have penciled in two racks, but no benches because of the seating arrangements in the park and not really knowing how that was all going to look right. when we we walked through it. But you know, but yeah, you know, that maybe would be a question. I'm assuming this style bench would is fairly stable and they won't quit making it would be you know, yeah I think it's a pretty that common concern me about doing it is a common it. but uh, and it might make one that's smaller too I mean I don't really know all the details of that but uh, that was kind of the standard size we went with was there any price breaks at all then if you went you know, when we quoted it, we said, what's the price for 17 so. Gotcha. Yeah, you well, could probably five, six hundred dollars, you could get one out of wood. Yeah, no, no sense, if you're going to do it, no sense in doing it. Something that won't uh, last. And we could certainly trim the list back, and I'd be happy to go over that with you. You know, you can, we can help make help make the decision as to where we want to put them. I have just a little bit of a concern of only doing six or seven initially. I, I, I can read I through if you that. want where I decided to put them. I, I say there's five around the courthouse. Um, they would say because they're paying for theirs. Right. I have one. There's a nice tree um, down by the uh, I have one down by the chamber office and then the, on the opposite half of that block down by Global Healers, there's a nice it's nice to have a bench where there's a tree you know, I can sit there in the shade a little bit um, so I put one there I put one at WROI. Oh, that's a bike. <coughs> bike racks at WROI and putts. Wellness Center has got two racks. No, the Wellness Center just has a rack. The Cuban restaurant has a rack and a bench. Evergreen has a rack and a bench. Uh, Flirt already has a bench, so we're just going to put a rack. She has her own bench out there. I think the Streamliner has one over there too. A Poblano's rack and bench, the Foundation rack and bench, Giretti's rack. I did not put the benches at Giretti's because they have outdoor dining tables sitting there. So I thought well, maybe just a, bit, a couple bike racks in that area. The medical clinic has got a rack and a bench. Bailey's has two benches now, but they may not want. There, there's some talk that they might do their own thing there. So. Before we buy the two for Bailey's, we would approach the, the brewery people to see what they want to do there. And then I put one uh, in front of United Way slash Webs. So that's kind of where they're distributed. So we're maybe down to 15. Yeah. I, there is, I didn't think it was on there, but I got it on here. Okay. So. Um, I will say, as far as available funds, we could 
pull it from our CCD fund. Um, I mean, we've got available cash, plus I believe I've got appropriation available because we earmark, um, uh, I can't remember if it's 50 or $100,000 that we put towards other projects or stormwater. And if we have some issue, large issue with stormwater, we can pull it out. But this is a project that we could take out of CCD. So there would be, I would have to jump through to the hoops. Um, but I could, all, like I said, I'm pretty sure the council budget has some available funds as well that I can pull from the council budget too. Okay. Do you have major heartburn on trying to do all of them at once, or is it? I would hate to get 17 and find out if we had our druthers, we would have got a different style or done it in a different manner. And I mean, we got then we got 17 grand spent. I don't know. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. If you're yeah, we can get one. Well, or. Or, you know, yeah, set, them, set them someplace, see how they And I'm sure we could even make a field trip to Silver Lake to go look at them. You know, they they make them there. So Silver Lake got them? I, they make them there. The so, the, the city. Oh, in the city? I don't know. <laughs> That's always the first thing to look for. <laughs> if they don't have them, you drive right on through. <laughs> it's not hard to do at Silver Lake. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, maybe a maybe a field trips in order and some more discussion. I I don't know. It's up to, it's up to the council. Ted, if I may, one of the things in the down the last two studies that the, that have been done for the downtown revitalization studies, the benches all seem to circle around this kind of style. Both groups that did the first downtown study and then the second one, it seems like this has been kind of the style that they just keep coming back to. So. As far as the style of it, I don't know that um, you're going to find many committees veer too far away from it because it fits that look and feel that the design committee and this, the um, engineering firm that helped us with our downtown revitalization study kind of keeps coming back to. So as far as the style goes, I think we would be okay there. But yeah, I but take a field trip to Silver Lake to look at them would be a bad idea. The same company that made that rack makes benches, and they were actually a couple thousand dollars more than the Silver Lake company, and they their style was in the book that you know what we had done. But that Ashley style is identical, to it. and it's even made to the same metal. So um, it is a. You like field trips? Just go for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you could probably get away from his construction zone down there. Yeah. Well, it's a good idea. We should definitely go sit in one. If Make they sure fit us, they'll fit anybody, right, right. Harry? That's right. <laughs> what do you folks think? If you cut the, the, the volume of the benches down, would you also be cutting down the number of racks, or would you keep it at 28? Uh, the current racks were 21. They were or 22 plus maybe four extras because I'm not, you know, what I'd like to do with this rack is I'd like to see this rack used throughout the community. You know, the RDP is restricted to downtown, but I think this same rack could be used at the boat landings, at the city park. You know, we could, and they're not that expensive. We're getting, and those could be made in batches, but it, you know, it would be nice to have this. Craig, Craig's would certainly be more flexible with they? Yeah, I mean, they're going to, um, there's a little bit of, but you know we could get um, additional racks made for it. Just can't be part of this funding request because that would. But the price would be the same. You know, park department wants to buy some. Um, it'd just be nice to have consistency. Then I could say they are going to be black. Maybe the. Request could just be in a dollar amount, and then we can continue to fine tune this thing until we get everybody on the same page with it. You know, I've seen these things too uh, with placards on them that say "Donated by So and So" yeah. or in "Memory of So and So." I know we talked about it. You yeah. know, but if a business closes and then somebody else's name is on the bench in front of them, and no. 
okay. I don't know. I don't want to say eat at Joe's or, you know, I'd like it to be. So you want a generic badge? I do. <laughs> What's the generic price, Harry? <laughs> do do better it's only going to go up. We start getting them customized, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, what if we could approve a, a dollar amount of two and then let them work with that and see how that, uh, see how that factors in? I still want to go take a look at one with mm -hmm. it. I don't know. I'd love to go over with you as well. For the purpose of tonight, though, are we looking at separate at a package deal, bike racks and benches, or is everybody are you happy enough with the, the bike racks that they can proceed with that, and then benches be separate? So, no, I'm, I'm just asking you if you're. That, I, I haven't heard any reservations about the bike racks at all. Um, I assume if, if, he's, if they're, they're awarded the money, they uh -huh. will. It'd be nice to do them together as far as installation goes because sure. you know the final layout of where it's going to sit is going to be a they're gonna, whoever's doing them is going to put one in one of each in at the same time. I mean, ideally. Are you comfortable with the seventeen? The yes. number the seventeen thousand. I just looked. Uh, yes. Well, then I'll go ahead and make a, a, a motion to encumber the 17,000 with uh, and um, respectfully ask that the council, whoever wants to go, would have an opportunity to go over to Silver Lake to uh, take a look at, at the bench and see the bench and uh, with you and then empower the uh, committee to make their decision on benches and bike rides. I have a motion to encumber $17,000 to be put toward the bike rack and bench project. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Moved by Councilman Smith, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor uh, signify by raising your right hand. It's unanimous. Thank you seven. very much. We can say you can go. Hmm? We can say you can go. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go. Okay, thank, thank you, Harry. Do you, you, you make your other meeting, do you? I think I can. Thank you. Right. you bet. Thanks, Harry. I'd love to follow him down the street with him. <laughs> <laughs> Chain your bike to this. Yeah, that's my bike, Harry. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, the next uh, piece of business involves a tree board uh, presentation of an ordinance revision for allowable tree species. That would be Helen? It's me. Please identify yourself for the TV and the New Sentinel. Helen Anyert, uh, representing the tree board. Um, I'll get these. Um, here tonight to make a request. In 2014, the ordinance of the tree board was revised to remove the large trees that were planted in the tree lawn. And we'd like to put those back. Some of those were diseased trees needed to be removed. Others were just not very good tree lawn trees. Um, the committee was Eric Schlarf and myself and Jim Mulligan, the arborist, and Mitch Melton of Shroff Nurseries. We all gathered, researched, did a lot of background on these trees that we're presenting. They were... Rochester's always been blessed with a beautiful canopy of trees. You drive down a street in the fall and it's like you're driving under a golden cloud. It's beautiful. And we, we'd like to see that continue. Um, there are benefits, environmental, the shade for homeowners. 
most people don't sit on the street next to the but they're still it's valuable to have that they're not invasive they're not um, ADA problematic these trees do not have um, surface roots aren't problematic for getting into water and sewer lines that kind of thing and we would like to have the list that you have been presented reinstated along with there's one line in the revision that was of the 2014 ordinance and it says any of the following trees may be planted as park trees but only small trees may be planted as tree lawn trees we'd like that to be removed um, I don't know how many of you were here when the uh, last ordinance was revised Chase were you around then? Yeah. Marty okay mm -hmm. Any thoughts, input? Uh, so you would like to have C completely removed and those types of trees, the small I'm trees? I'm sorry? You would like to have the small trees? The, 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 the small trees that are Which listed there. Yes, okay. there are and large, like, medium, and small trees and all listed. Like to, and you'd like to have them all removed? No. From the list? The, these sorry. are the ones that I want, We the tree board would I'm like sorry. to present okay. to be the, the current list, to be the, the, the change, change, change to that. I misunderstood. Okay. I've got you now. No, there were, the, in the old list, there was sugar maple, white ash, green ash, little leaf linden, basswood. Those were the large trees that were relieved, removed, and some of them were problematic, but these and there you'll notice that there is maple on there but those are the maples recommended by both Jim Mulligan and Mitch Melton so if any of these so, if any of these in future years tear up our sidewalks we blame Jim Mulligan <laughs> <laughs> if you're around <laughs> if you're still around you can <laughs> woodsman spare that tree <laughs> I don't know where the question would go, but how, how do we ascertain that these don't have root problems that get into the sewer systems and you know, the background on the, the background information on the on the uh, sheets that we just gave you? Yeah, I, um, this was discussed in in the book that the reference book that we used. There were book, there were trees that said problematic s surface roots and that kind of thing, but that those were not on this list. What that that, that ordinance was revised about 2010. Wasn't it? it was the copy that I have, 27th of May 2014. Okay, 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, okay. Okay, there's the ordinance number. Yeah. Um, again, one of, those. Uh, one of those. You two remember the issue? I'm trying to think of who. Do you remember who brought that to our attention? Why we changed the tree? That's why we did it. I want to say part of it stemmed from we had, I think, we had a bad storm come through. I think there was a combination of issues that came up. There was a storm that came through, we had a lot of damage. Uh, that we were running, we were going through our ADA transition plan, so we had and we identified several sidewalks that had been damaged by the shallow tree roots. Uh, I think all kind of in that same. So at that time, I, I'm not sure if uh, Mr. Smiley at that time had went to the tree board and said we want to revise it. If it was sent from the Board of Works originally because of all the tree damage that came with the ex ex extra expense we had. I, I don't recall exactly what spurred that change. I just know that there was several things that kind of happened and then I believe um, Mr. Smiling had gone to the tree board and said, look, we need to make some changes if I, am I you might remember more than I, because I think you talked a lot more than I did, but yeah, I think, I think a combination of the storm and, uh, and some discussion Back a few years, Ben. 
Yeah, I understand. <laughs> 2014. But yeah. I, I said I think that was just a combination of things. I don't think it was one in particular thing that said this is why. We, and, and the other thing was is there was a conversation about flowering trees. Uh, there was, you know, having that flowering tree down down the main street to make it look pretty and inviting. I, and the smaller trees were easier to prune. Uh, but at the same time. The challenge you face is as a tree city there's still a, a fundamental uh, responsibility for us to maintain that tree canopy mm -hmm. so finding that right fit of the trees that meet those challenges for the tree city designation as well as you know you don't want to walk into a concrete jungle and have no shade you know it's kind of thing so mm -hmm. um, and we've actually had residents i will say we have had residents once we made that change that were disappointed because they wanted another big tree in their front yard because it provided shade for their house. So, well, yeah, it, it's when you have the big trees, yeah, they're beautiful and they're going to take care of the shade issues and all that. It certainly does designate a tree city distinction. Are there going to be some negatives to them? Sure, there's negatives with all of them. Uh, we'll have a sidewalk pushed up once in a while with some of the bigger trees. We'll have a sewer issue periodically what you get into with roots and stuff but uh, you're gonna have issues with any anything anything you have it uh, uh, I don't know council I, if we're gonna be a tree city I think we've got to cover the, the bases uh, and that's uh, certainly a designation we've been very proud of for a number of years well you have and you have to think about how many years was that tree there before it presented a problem presented a problem to the sidewalk or to sewer system these trees that we've been careful about selecting we don't expect anticipate those problems and smaller trees in a tree lawn can be uh, at a disadvantage when you pull up to a corner and you look because the tree the ordinance says yeah. eight foot yeah. and that's not very practical when you're having a lot of small trees mm -hmm. in the tree lawn. It creates visibility issues. Of, yeah. Yes. Foliage mm -hmm. Yes. Of Especially if they're not pruned up. Yes, and it's very Foliage difficult branches. to prune up a small tree to an eight foot. <laughs> <laughs> you have an umbrella. <laughs> if it only grows ten feet, you're cutting off up to eight. Then exactly. <laughs> Just make sure we have somebody who has. Jim, do you know anybody that can do that work? Or I want to say, not origami. What is that? That's, that's bon paper. Bon that's paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know bon bonsai. 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 There you go. We could have a contest. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There we go. We have a bench. One thing. One thing I've been thinking of through all this is that adding more trees will have, have more diversity. On tree. Yeah. Just like the, you know, 40, 50 years ago, they were saying, let's plant elm trees, let's plant all ash trees and have all, you know, yeah. if you just have one or two things, and if something does come in and destroy them, uh, but so we have different trees there for different sides. That's another thing, too, is that I'm not sure if Ms. Andrew said, but different size tree based on how big your tree lawn is. Correct. Mm -hmm. So yeah. rather than just having a, you know, a crab apple in a 30 foot tree lawn, uh, it good, looks good, but if you can get a maple or an oak or something that's going to fill that spot, I think that will help the area. There's designated distances of, or widths of tree lawn depending upon the size of the tree. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that cost-wise, they're all about the same. Yes, because they're all bought at, at a small at a small size. I see. What about the massy nettles? Uh, the net or berry dropping from, I mean, a lot of trees have a, a very small fruit or berry on them. Mm -hmm. They're a flowering tree. Um, they can be very messy on the sidewalks where people are. Um, in all of our, in all of our looking, we didn't find any tree that doesn't have something that drops from it. Right. But it can be a nut, it can be a berry, it can be a maple tree, those mm -hmm. early gigs. Or I will say the, the flowering trees 
when they did their research back in 2014, one of the things that the Board of Works had recommended, I believe it came from the Board of Works, was that they find trees that were non-fruit bearing, like the crab apples, a non-fruit bearing, or a, the hawthorns, that it was a non-thorn okay. bearing. So they did do, so the ones that we have in there should be in that Are species okay. that's less, there may still be um, some, um, I'll say waste product from sure. the tree when it sheds, uh, but they did do their due diligence just to find the ones that would be the least uh, problematic. Yep. The board just massaged this list pretty well, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> would we need an entire new resolution or would we just amend the list of trees acceptable? <coughs> no, I think you need to amend the ordinance. Amend the ordinance. Yeah. It's my understanding that the list is in, in the ordinance. Correct. Helen has typed this up, and this is uh, this is good. I mean, it's laid out perfectly, but we need it in a revised format to, uh, to pass a vote on it. Um, it with the uh, action of the council, of course, with your, your thoughts on it. I'm in favor. I sat through all the the tree board meetings, so. I've Oh, the work. Right, on the I've seen the work they put through this. It's not one of those, hey, let's do this for Tuesday. Uh, it's been, <laughs> well, it's, it, but it's, it's been I several understand. months of work I and understand. talking, and I think uh, Mrs. Enyer was saying that they had looked at maybe 30 trees, and they said, this would be great, and the, the other guy said, no, those won't work because of these right. problems. So they weeded all the, but not say weed the bad ones out necessarily, but just the ones that weren't as practical, and they've narrowed it down to this list here, which would be practical for the area, for the size of the space they're going into. So I guess I would, I'm satisfied they've done a good job. I think it'll help the city. So I'd be in favor of amending the ordinance to reflect that work. I would too. Well, I would, okay, I would entertain uh, a motion then that we have this as presented, drawn up into a, uh, a You don't need a motion. I don't need it. No. We'll do that. We'll just have you revise okay. it. We'll act on it. If yeah, next. Yeah, to be in. I can have for you next month. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, yeah, I'd like to say something you. else before you leave. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always got something to say. Mm -hmm. I want to compliment our tree board. Uh, I've been to a few of the meetings. Eric, Helen, Ray, Dossman, and certainly Jim Mulligan, who's been a huge asset as our, our arborist consultant. You folks Very came helpful. in and you took a system that was a little chaotic and revised the reporting process of people who wanted some activity uh, regarding trees and their tree lawn. It seems to be working very well. Yeah, yes. The process we have is definitely working much better. We've got a complete paper trail, full circle all the way around. Uh, don't forget this is Ravencroft as well. I'm sorry, yes, Ruth Ann Ravencroft. Yeah, well, thank covered you. all. Thank you. Um, it, it's working well. Uh, you folks, I know, put your hearts you. into that. It's an unpaid board. It's certainly your time that we appreciate. And, and also your talents. You have a lot of knowledge in this area. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I jumped over Halloween, didn't I? Uh, we missed Halloween. Well, you wrote Harry in. I know. Uh, I messed it all up for you. I'm sorry. Who's here for Halloween trick or treat hours? Nobody. That's just. Nobody's <laughs> here? No. That's a council discussion. Deny <laughs> Although yeah. Sarah might want to speak There's, up. Uh, um, There's a guy from the new Sentinel in a costume. Uh, no, <laughs> you gonna be around for Halloween, West? No, okay. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. He's gonna dress up as a reporter. Okay, uh, what's what are we looking at for Halloween hours? Uh, well, typically they're October 31st. <laughs> Okay. Is that when they have it? Throw it out there. Is that when they have it? <laughs> We've had the discussion of changing it to a different day, but nobody wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, in the past, was last year. Yeah, in, what, what in the past, what the history has been is the the 
they do the downtown booth fest typically from 4 30 to 5 30 for the downtown folks and uh, the merchants that want to participate and then uh, in the last couple of years the rochester downtown partnership has taken over that role of booth fest and uh, coordinated uh, costume contest or things of that nature i'm not sure what's in store this year uh, we've had a, some changing of the guard and Motions committee, so we'll have to see if Sarah's got any updates on that when she speaks. But the 5 4:30 to 5:30 is downtown, and then typically regular trick or treat hours start 5:30 to 7:30 is typically what has been done in the past. And there's no rain date. It's rain, shine, snow. Because <laughs> I was two all. years ago, it was yeah. snowing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be anything. It was, yeah, it was snowing. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Um, and then basically we just need the council to vote so that way we can get it, the information to the Chamber of Commerce and to the downtown partnership and those and we start getting phone calls from the news channels in South Bend as well wanting to get our trick treat hours posted so trying to get ahead of the game so we can get the media notified of when our trick or treat hours will be it seems to have worked pretty well in the past as uh, somebody downtown that participates in Boo Fest. We get a lot of kids downtown and and then they do go have plenty of time to trick or treat. So I'll make a motion to set trick or treat hours on October 31st with uh, Boo Fest from 4.30 to 5.30 and trick or treat hours from 5.30 to 7.30 with no rain out time schedule. Okay, I've got a motion uh, uh, on the table. Uh, do I have a second for that? Second. Seconded by Karen. That was in favor. Signified by reason. 4-0 on the uh, tr treat hours of Halloween hours. Okay, thank you. Uh, Randy Williams, 4th uh, Street Grant Award update. Good evening, Randy. Um, we received uh, 670000 from the Community Crossing Grant for the 4th Street project. We put in for $995,324. Uh, the total project cost was $1,327,99. The 995000 was in dot 75% because it's a we'd pay 25%, they'd pay 75. So basically, uh, we're gonna go back to our engineering firm and uh, go back over the project cost, see what we can do, but we're thinking we can probably do about 90% of it, and then we will apply for the other 10% and whatever we need to finish the project for a grant for next year. Yeah, of course, we're talking about the uh upgrade to 4th Street and discussed at different times and widening and redoing the roads out to the industrial park and uh, all the way to 25 eventually uh, from uh, the railroad tracks uh, in front of the, the Prairie Mill area there all the way out and uh, that would also include uh, drainage, maybe some drainage work done as well as sidewalk work done on the job. Uh, Put the sidewalks in on the south side of the project going all the way out. Um, is there some lighting in there as well? There is not. Okay. Uh, this is the Community Crossroads grant that Randy uh, mentions is the grant, if you remember last year, the uh, county was successful in getting a million dollars, and it's strictly for road projects, such as what we talked about and they were able to utilize a couple of their major projects uh, completion of those uh, we have to use the money within a certain time period but uh, NDOT started that grant process last year and we have every thought and hope that it's going to continue uh, that's what everybody informs us so we'll be able to apply again next year and we can actually use that as a wraparound to 
for this project if we need to, uh, as well as bring in other major street uh, road work projects. Uh, the county got a million last year. They got 515,000 this year. There were about, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, but there were about 3,000 more requests for grants in our particular category than they had last year. So there's people are getting more in tune to this NDOT money that it's out there and available. And so uh, folks that were uh, successful last year, most of them that I've seen, uh, didn't get as much as they did the year before. You know how that is. <laughs> they kind of get more activity. They kind of cut down on how they spread it around. And even though it was our first, uh, we weren't granted all the money we asked for, but a, a major, major part, large portion of it, with 670000 So uh, Randy uh, did a tremendous job on uh, putting the uh, reports together that were necessary to apply for this grant. And uh, I want to thank you and ask him to give you, give you all kind of an update that uh, this project will be will be moving forward. Okay. Do you want me to go ahead and do the rest while I'm here? Or? Boy, you are getting pushy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can get you six hundred and seventy thousand. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. He's basing in that, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Go ahead and give the rest of your your department report. Okay. We um, our lab did our normal plant testing. Our plant. We mowed Plant Lions Club in the depot. We also cleaned second stage clarifiers one and two. We transferred sludge from the primary to secondary digesters, and we filled some drying beds. Also, uh, AirVac was having a seminar for the Northern Indiana Operators Association, and so they came over and we gave them a tour of the wastewater plant. Collections, we pulled the pump at the, vac the Victoria Park lift station, cleaned it. We mowed the lift stations. We took our Aquatech to Brown equipment because it was due for a service on the vac unit. Uh, 7th Street, uh, we've got the, the structure on the east side of the tracks is in place. They've got the uh, new 30 inch casing installed underneath the railroad. And right now we're waiting on spacers because they have to, once they get the casing in, then they, they take grade shots off of it and then the, make the spacers to fit it so they get the proper grade for the pipe coming underneath. They was expecting them in this week, but uh, I haven't heard anything about them yet. The stormwater, we don't have any update on that. And as far as the wastewater plant, uh, Clean Co's moved equipment in uh, and they started working on the phosphorus removal and supernate pump station. Tomorrow they're supposed to start digging the footers for our uh, phosphorus building. Just to uh, remind you all, the phosphorus project has gone, you know, it started uh, the due diligence in regards to that area started back in the last administration to uh, get our get our plant up to the newest requirements that uh, we have to meet on phosphorus levels. We are we are moving ahead now with that project. Uh, the engineering firm, the contractors, and everything have been have been lined up. And we're moving forward on that. Again, Randy, that's falling under his tent. Uh, the Seventh Street project. Uh, you want to explain a little bit? Uh, remind everybody what that was. We're putting a new uh, sewer line under the railroad. The one that was there was an iron and it was uh, scaled so bad that when we tried to clean it, or we went to camera it, you couldn't get the truck through. So we, um, we're putting a new sewer line under and part of it is, well, and it takes care of the, around the lake and the east side of town. That's a 12 inch line that runs half full pretty much all the time. So we're putting in a 15 just for cases of expansion on that side of town. Yeah, so yeah. The first time they pushed a 24 inch casing under, 
it was to the point that it was so far on grade that it, could, it wouldn't make the anything work so we made them put in a new one they went four feet south and they shoved a 30 underneath of it and uh, then like I said as soon as they get that done then they'll put the 15 inch line in it, uh, they'll put in all the piping they'll have to cover it and then it has to sit for 30 days and then they do a mandrel test on it to make sure when they backfilled and compressed the aggregate that they didn't collapse the pipe as soon as that gets done, then they'll start bypass pumping and hook up the new. They'll abandon the old, fill the old sewer with flowable grout, and then we'll be done. Yeah, it it's, uh, doesn't sound like much, but it's a pretty major project. And if, if that uh, old mine had uh, gone to pot, we would have been in big trouble, wouldn't we? Yes. Uh, Again, I would like to compliment you, Randy. Uh, Randy had the foresight to have uh, one of his people on site every day that these crews were working out there. And uh, I'm not sure we'd have discovered some of the faux pas that were happening if, if he hadn't had somebody on site there and, uh, and did a good job of holding their feet to the fire. The, the, going back to the drawing board and studying all over again didn't cost us a nickel other than time because uh, it was the, the vendor's issue. So again, thank you very much. Uh, Japers, Trapers, the grant and that you just earned your pay this week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> thank you much. Anybody got questions for Randy? Thank you very much, Randy. Okay. Um, before going on with the, the rest of the department head reports, I just I wanted to open up a subject for discussion. I wish I had the whole council here, but uh, we we'll start to chew on this, folks. Uh, the seated revenues and distributions, that's the county economic development tax, and I know we've had these discussions a couple different times. Um, that is a it's, a, it's a county income tax that uh, taken out of all of our paychecks to fund, uh, basically it was initially started to fund economic development, and it's also how uh, the FEDCA organization was initially funded and established. And back in 1991, uh, the county came forward and asked that the city of Rochester, the city of Fulton, the city of Kiwana, the city of Akron, uh, turn over the, the control of our specific piece of that uh, income uh, so that one distribution, one, one party handling that could uh, work with the economic development group, uh, put, put the, the economic development emphasis together. So uh, about $900,000 is collected every year of that 250, 300, uh, right around there would. It, it fluctuates. It, it fluctuates. would probably be closer, but it does fluctuate based on income. Uh, 250, if you will, would uh, come our way normally if we, had, if we hadn't done that. But you know, that would have made us responsible for portions of the economic development expenses. I just throw it out for consideration and discussion. Uh, that that 1991 agreement, we need to dust it off, in my opinion, and rethink it, especially when uh, it's announced that the county has a revenue shortfall and they're thinking of using those funds to boost up some of uh, their general fund issues. Uh, and that came into play what, five, six years ago uh, with the property tax caps uh, and everybody was squealing about the uh, revenue shortfall that the property tax caps were throwing at everyone. So the state came through and allowed counties, municipalities, whomever, to take some of those seeded funds or, and use them to shore up their areas. And uh, the county has, has done that. And that's, that's fine. They had every right to do that. But uh, the city of Rochester, the city of Fulton, the city of Kiwan, we could have done the same thing. 
Uh, I just think it's time we take a hard look at that, and if not get our whole chunk back every year, at least a portion of it, so we've got some economic development funds to uh, utilize in the city. I, I wanted to throw that out for <coughs> general comment, uh, suggestions, your thoughts. Chase, you look like you want to say something. I do have a question, I guess, on um, do you know for sure who is responsible for paying the, the bond payment for the Blackener property? Yeah, we did that. That's another, that was in the paper just uh, today. Uh, oh, was there's a. Okay. Uh, the county is going forth and uh, they're refinancing that, that bond uh, commitment because of uh, uh, some interest uh, improvements that can be taken advantage of. That was a, a $1.5 million bond. And yeah, it, it was used to uh, put in the sewer project going out to Forest Street. That, was, that bond is listed under the county and the County Redevelopment Corporation. We have asked numerous times for uh, some type of uh, uh, documentation uh, asking what our commitment was for that. Uh, nobody's been able to answer that for us. And yeah, in discussing this issue, it, it has been mentioned by the different folks at the county level that, hey, uh, a portion of these monies are going through the bond payment for Fourth Street. Okay, uh, what is our commitment there? I mean, I wasn't involved with that. Uh, surely, that's if there's something that's in writing, but uh, we're not on the bond. So it's, it's a good question, Chase. Very good question. What's the, uh, if, if, if you know, what's the general thought for the other communities that are involved? You, you had mentioned Akron, Kiwana. Are they, are they, my understanding that this was an all or none package, that either everybody's in or, or if one wants to get out, then the whole. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. I've not been party to any of those types of discussions. I thought you were saying it all in one package in 1991. I actually, that, that yeah. was in, in, I sent you a packet in part of the council, and I included the council minutes that stated that. that yeah, essentially, the city, oh, okay. it was an all or none deal. Um, so the understanding with the other, at least my conversations with the other treasurers is, is that if one of us breaks it, it's broken for everybody. Because the res the way the resolution was written, I mean, obviously we're not attorneys, and we would have to turn to our attorney to, to review that. But um, <coughs> the, we we have had conversations about it, myself and the other court treasurers. Uh, some other council members have it's been brought to their attention. So the conversation has been there about this because obviously they've had projects. You know, after this, they've had the the biggest one that y'all probably are familiar with is the Opera House. Uh, Kiwana had one of their buildings that Fedco had purchased and renovated and ultimately sold. So they, each each one of our communities has had some kind of a project or something come across their desk that their hands were tied because they didn't have the fund their the seated funds that they were entitled to. Um, that they could have just made the decision whether to do it or not do it uh, without having to go to the county and say we'd like our allocation. So I know the conversations have happened. Uh, whether they brought them up in their formal meetings, I don't know. Well, and, and I know too that uh, you can argue all day long that the certain offices at the county are taking care of all of us. Uh, but my retort to that is, well, wouldn't they be doing that if we didn't have seated? never gone that route they're under the tent of the county uh, back in 2010 I think again I just maybe oh, I was longer than that ago Casey's office the area planning oh, um, I'll have to look at the I, it, I don't remember if it was 2008 or 2010 
Yeah, I know one of the uh, things that was mentioned when we eliminated our, you know, inspectors and uh, and our, our part of the permit process here at the, the city, uh, it was touted that uh, you know we were going to save X amount of dollars by doing it. Well, we're still paying for it. I mean, that that's where seated funds are being utilized. Uh, and, and that's fine. I have no problem. I'm not uh, saying we should pull the whole thing out, but it would be nice to, uh, when we're looking for some seeded funds, uh, we don't go in and have to scrape and scramble to get a, get a seeded fund. They kind of like what Harry was asking for today. We ought to have our, our own, a portion of our own seeded funds available to us. That, that's that's my take on it, unless you folks have some other justification. Uh, I, think we should, I would ask you to chew on it a little bit, bring it back to the next meeting, to tell me what you think, if you want to think about that. It's a big, big jump, I know that. Have you tried talking? I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, I was going to say, and I, I did email you guys uh, everything that I had from paperwork wise from 2004 forward with the exception of which everything's available on, by the way on the DLGF website so it's public record the only thing that was in that I had emailed was the 2004 5 6 and 7 was a document that I found in my records from the previous from, from uh, I believe it was from Carlos Arvin had typed up so I'm not sure where that data came from because it's not on the DLGF website uh, because they, they go back to 2008. So, but everything else, and you can see each one of the municipalities allocation plus the counties for each one of those years. So you can see um, the actual dollar figures, seeded funds that we we would have received, um, and then each one of the municipalities would have received. So I tried to give you as much information to review. You're I, I didn't process. see any information, and I appreciate what you sent. Um, is, is there a process for breaking uh, or pulling out of something like this? Um, I don't have any idea how to even look at that. Yeah. There was a, we would have, um, I believe we have a resolution of our own. I thought I had included it, but maybe not. I'll have to but I didn't, check. I didn't see I think any I just language about there. the process if, mm -hmm. if this were to end, how it would happen. At a minimum, I think it'd be a, be a new resolution from the council of some sort, but there may be some statutory requirements as well. Well, again, I, you know, when, when, when the county starts talking about 800 and some thousand dollars of seeded funds to support their shortfalls, and, uh, you know, we're, we're contributing there to the tune of 250,000 or more, you don't you don't mind the supporting some of these programs, uh, but uh, as far as the total commitment, uh, let's take a look at the whole picture. And I did. Uh, you, you started to ask if I had any conversations with anyone, and I have uh, talked with uh, Council President Jim Whitman, and he says, you know, that's that's not an absolute. That's some area where we are going to be looking at, though. Uh, as soon as they get their information back from the state, they're probably going to be looking at looking at their budget real heavily for what they need to do. So, but it just, it's been 1991 that we just turned those funds over. I just think it's time to think about it a little bit. And, you know, one of the things that Ted and I have chatted about with this is we have to keep in, in mind, and he already mentioned it, that these funds help to fund FEDCO. They also help with the Area Planning Commission office. Um, so in, in reorganizing this, and through the course of this, the other thing that has happened is state statute has changed, and now they no longer, they have repealed the Indiana Code that established seated, uh, which was IC 6-3.5-7, and replaced it with IC Code 6-3.6, uh, which is the new local income tax, which is LIT. So they have, the state itself has changed some of their structure when it comes to the economic development income taxes 
Uh, they've also, it also includes our LOID, which is our public safety LOID. It includes a lot, anything that deals with the income tax, they have changed the structure on how that is done. So I think through the course of that and our due diligence to make sure um, that whatever this revision might look like, that we keep in mind all of the, as Ted said, the outline factors of, because we don't, we don't want to um, cause a shortfall of a, in a uh, department or a area of the city that we need to support. Um, so again, this is um, up for discussion, just bringing it to light for you guys to chew on it a little bit. And if you need any further information from my office, just let me know and I will see what I can find or in my research. I've, I've got a lot of other documents on see I have an entire folder as you can see on CNET. I've done a lot of homework, um, but some of it wasn't really for, for the season. Um, if you want further information, let me know. Do they spend it all every year? All in money? That I'm not certain. Uh, we would have to ask Christina Schreiber. What is a, Mr. Thompson asked earlier, what is the, uh, if you know, what is the total bond payment that has been going out the past several years? Uh, it fluctuates with their interest, but uh, it, total bond payment is right around 200000 a year. Okay. And do we... Because they make two installments. Do we know what portion they... Are they saying it's the cities and what portion is the counties? No. Uh, according to the DL, this is all on the DL Jeff website, uh, their bond is totally listed as county. Or I understand how it's listed, no, but, they, no, but we what, have what no the breakdown is right. Well, yeah, if we, mm -hmm. the mayor said that it was part of it is that they were applying right some now, of our seat of money towards that or all right. of it. That that I, I wouldn't. Okay. If, if we right now it's verbal that they have stated that they utilize part of our seat of portion to pay towards this bond. Okay. But it's all verbal. Okay. We have today, as of right now, we don't have anything in writing. So what that agreement. Uh, there's that one break, breakdown where it showed the the county and then Rochester, Rochester City and everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was coming mm -hmm. from the state. That's why I didn't know about the, the bond payment, too. No, that didn't include, no. Okay. Nope. Well, yeah, the, the information yeah. from the DLGF on the revenues received it's is just, just our, is the revenue allocation. Okay. okay. I, I would, this is purely my speculation, but I would think if you uh, returned to 1991 and threw in the uh, uh, factor of what we have today that uh, you can use these funds to prop up your general fund if you have a shortfall, I doubt that that vote would have gone the way it went. That's just my speculation. Uh, anyway, throw that out to chew on and uh, we'll have some more discussion about it. And what one follow up, last question. Sure. Uh, when was the last time that the city had gotten any seated money or re requested seated money who's in the county? Well, as far as actually receiving our own direct without or just, 1991, or, or as asking far as actually for us going to ask them, to my knowledge, I don't know that I've had a, a mayor or a council member that I that has gone and specifically asked for seated funds. I know Terry Lee has gone for different projects, but I don't know, I couldn't tell you how much or what specific projects he would have gone under the FEDCO umbrella to request seated funds. Okay. Um, I, I honestly, I could say we'd have to ask Terry what he's done and then previous FEDCO directors prior to him. Um, there should be some documentation of that within the FEDCO minutes and or the county minutes, but we wouldn't necessarily have it okay. here unless um, it started at the council level and that would require a lot of reading and research to find out. But as, but as far as you know, has the, the city itself made any re requests for that? Since I have been in office, I the only one that I can recall off the top of my head was when there was a developer that was looking at purchasing the, the old Hartshacker and Marks factory and there was conversation about uh, asbestos removal and that was the only one I could think of, and, but again, I there may have been requests that went directly from administration to Terry okay. to the to the council that would not have came across uh, my documenting minutes. 
Okay. 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 Uh, department head reports. Chief Butler. My department heads are dwindling. Wait, I have a question. You know something, Can we, can we skip down to with the alley vacation for the Yeah, so that was so They don't trust you with the password? No, I, my screen locked up on me. I don't know what happened. I tried to silence it. The public hearing for the alley vacation, I, I made a mistake on the agenda, and the ordinance for the alley vacation for Pickens, Mrs. Pickens, was supposed to have been a public hearing, and I, again, I think I deleted it when I deleted Harry off of the agenda when I, because I'd added a few things and I removed it. So I you really apologize. <laughs> Can we get them up and let them go to do their presentation so they don't have to stay? I don't think Chief Butler would have to go. Apparently he's not happy to say he's not. I figured you're going to allow them to go. I'll be here for the end of the meeting. <laughs> no, that'd be fine. I apologize. Thank you. I, do we need to wait for That's all right. Do we need to wait for the come back? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, real good. you just, just hang tight with us a second. We got no one problem. council member in Okay. God. How you been? Well, we're I've been good. Good, good, good. <laughs> you know, uh, last time I saw you, you didn't have a leg break. You know? I probably didn't have part of this either. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Um, while, he's, while you're reviewing, in your packets, there was actually an alley vacation. Uh, it's under the, I put everything together in one. Yeah little area there, uh, the notice of the public hearing, and there should have been some maps on there as well Yes. that show the area. Fortunately for Mr. Pickens, the area he owns on either side of it, so <laughs> the adjoining neighbors were pretty sparse Yeah. at that point. So I will let him kind of explain and then you have all the rest well, of I'll wait until. I'll wait for him. Where is Perry Street? What is it now? Perry Street? Yes, under the old, old yeah, map is Madison Perry. Map. That's yeah. probably 14th Street or uh, okay. Monroe. When that thing was, the alley was plotted out, 14th Street was another name, Monroe was another name. This was yeah. 100 years ago or whatever. Oh, yeah, I know, it was 1869, I think it said. But yeah. I was curious. So the downtown street thing 14th? I think it was 14th. Okay, that's true. I think so. Okay. Yeah, so that's I'm the curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can they, they, show they, you on the, <laughs> put my finger on it. To, to yeah, it ran north and south. Yeah. Well, this is a cross street from Madison to the, whatever the cross street was, so 14th then or 13th maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Monroe. Monroe ran. Madison. I mean, Madison ran and then to Monroe, south. 14th Street. Okay. Runs. Okay. Okay. That's we're great. Up. Yeah. We're back in session. Now we're, we're official now. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Frank, would you would you uh, identify yourself for the? Uh, yes, record? I'm uh, Frank Pickens, and uh, we're here about uh, my mother and I own a. She lives there, and when she bought the place, there was a lot there uh, that we bought, and uh, been thinking about moving home and building a small residence there. To, anyway, went and looked at the planning uh, commission, and sure enough, there was an old alley there that nobody knew about. In fact. There has been a home built there, and the home's been tore down. That probably was missed somewhere along the line. Modern technology caught up, finally caught up with us, and uh, it showed that alley there. Uh, it goes right down the middle of the alley, and um, or middle of the lot, runs north and south, and uh, we're here to uh, see if we could get that vacated to make it a buildable lot. Questions? How long, how long have you owned the properties? You've been there, Mom, 10, 12 years at least? I owned, I, my sister and I owned it together, and then I've owned it for like 10 years. Yeah. Well, how long? Well, I'm, I'm guess I'm going back to how long, is, how long have you owned it? The, the, how long have I personally? Well, you and your sister. When you, oh, gosh. Right. 20 years 20 probably. Years ago, okay. Yeah. Around in there. Okay, but it's not been an alley operating. Oh no! No, no, no! It's 
It's a yard. <laughs> it's just, but I have to have both. Right? <laughs> we were all shocked when we saw okay. this right. line no going one, through it. You have no one on the other side of it? Uh, we own the it runs down the middle of the lot, so we own both sides of the yeah. alley. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it from there, Ted. Oh yeah, I got, right I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I saw it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, right down the middle. Yeah, it, it's blocked off. Yeah. 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 Like I said, it was actually a house built there for years and years, right dead center over the alley. But and that, since the house was tore down, I suppose twenty five years ago, before Mother bought the place, and uh, uh, I would enter a motion to uh, approve. Yeah, we close the hearing first and then we well, make have a to motion. ask if there's any public comment. Okay. Yeah. You have any comments? <laughs> <laughs> Did he do it all right? <laughs> <laughs> the only ones we can fight are ourselves, okay. I guess. Yeah. Okay, well then I'll close the public meeting and uh, ask for some action from the council. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. First, there's because you, yeah, you don't. You, we we had Andy and I had this discussion while Harry was presenting um, all of the ordinances for this evening. You can only have the first two readings. You can't because we don't have a. You a don't full, have two thirds. Full council. Right. You would need a fifth member to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do I have a motion to <clears throat> make the first reading of uh, ordinance eight dash twenty seventeen? So moved. And a second. Okay. Those in favor signify. Okay. Chinaos. Marty, would you do the first reading, please? Ordinance number 08-2017. Ordinance vacating public ways, Rochester Township, Fulton County, Indiana. Whereas Frank C. Pickens, William Pickens, Andreas S. Ludwig have petitioned for the vacation of various public ways in Rochester Township, Fulton County, Indiana. Owners of real land within original and subsequent plots of the A.J. Holmes edition in the city of Rochester, more particularly described as follows. A 10-foot north-south alley lying between lot 506 and lot 507 and running the same length as lots 506 and 507 located in A.J. Holmes addition, a platted subdivision located in the city of Rochester, Fulton County, Indiana. Whereas a public notice of a public hearing was published in the Rochester Sentinel on the 14th day of September per state law, and a public hearing was held on the 26th day of September 2017 to allow interested parties to make their comments and concerns known. And whereas the Rochester Common Council duly considered the petition and proposed ordinance and determined that the ordinance should be adopted. Therefore, be it ordained that a 10-foot north-south alley lying between lot 506 and lot 507 and running the same length as lots 506 and 507 located in A.J. Holmes addition <coughs> platted subdivision located in the city of Rochester, Fulton County, Indiana. In Rochester, Indiana is in Rochester, Indiana is hereby declared vacated subject to the rights <coughs> of all public utilities currently existing and within said alley. Any, uh, any discussion? I would entertain a motion for the second reading and by title only. Uh, you're on, uh, you're, yeah. you're on, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm I tell you with your honor, I'm so used to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would propose a second reading. Do we spend the rules and read it by title only? Okay. You got the motion by Fitzwater, <laughs> seconded by Karen. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 08 2017. Ordinance vacating public ways, Rochester Township, 
Baldwin County, Indiana. Okay. We'll have to wait for the third reading until we have uh, more council members here, Frank. Okay. okay. Will I need to attend that meeting also? Or will I we need to have a representative here? Or? I, I, I we don't can let think you know. So. Once, cause what, once they, if they approve it at the next meeting, then I'll have to you know, get the information over to Casey Cole's office. Okay. So we'll, you'll be notified if you're not available to attend. Okay. We, we can. I mean, I want well, somebody. Yeah, that's that's you. I, I don't know that it's necessary. If it's not necessary, one. Well. Okay. Right. Well, good seeing you. Yeah. Nice seeing you, too. Yeah, nice you seeing you, too. <laughs> yeah, you bet, Marty. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Chief, you're up. Chief Butler, you're up for sure. <laughs> sure. Sorry about that. For now. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Reports for August. Structure fires one in the city. Calls for smoke. Oh, I'm sorry. Structure fires one in Rochester Township. Calls for smoke. One in the city. Landfill fire. Newcastle Township. Vehicle fire. Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms. Two in the city. Stove fire. One in the city. Rush field fires. One in Rochester Township. Mutual aid. Three in Henry Township. Accidents. Two in the city. Four in Rochester Township. One in Richland Township. Had a plane crash in the city. Medical assist, 16 in the city, 8 in Rochester Township, 4 in Newcastle Township, 4 in Richland Township. We had a CO check in the city, service calls, 3. We had a total of 57 runs and 1 drill. I'd also like to report all the trucks in the department have been serviced uh, mechanically. All the pumps have been serviced. Aerial has been tested and certified. And at the end of the month or, or the end of the next two weeks, all pumps will be tested and certified. So 100%. Uh, everything passed. Good to go on apparatus. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, you want to you want to mention uh, give a plug to the bicycle one uh, at this time? Or? Sure. Um, October eighth. It's a Sunday. Uh, we're going to have a bicycle ride. Uh, we've been collecting some sponsors. We do this to fund the smoke detector program. Uh, we're involved with the Red Cross. Uh, actually. Next month's drill will be going around Manitou Heights door-to-door -door checking, uh, kicking off fire prevention month, uh, kicking off that, going door-to-door -door asking people if their smoke detectors are working, if we can come in and help check. If they need to be updated, uh, we'll do that at no cost for, for the residents. And this is through the Red Cross and the funds that we, uh, we receive from our, our bike ride. This is our third or fourth annual bike ride. Uh, we utilize a nickel plate trail um, and have a have a pretty good day. So, like I said it's coming up October eighth. Questions? Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Good job. Okay, uh, Chief Shots is tied up with some police business tonight. Uh, Randy, given your report, Derek Holloway is tied up on some business also. So that brings us to. Uh, <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Lenny. Out at the uh, street department, um, we've been picking up uh, bags of yard debris, chipping brush, picking up small piles of brush, cleaning catch basins, patching holes on various streets, leveled out millings in our lot to expand it for our leaves, um, been working on street signs, uh, been running a recycling route change the downtown trash receptacles, getting ready to start uh, a crew out next week on picking up the leaves in bulk. Um, been sweeping the streets on the west side and the east side of the town. Um, where I'm looking to uh, looking into purchasing uh, a couple new sanders for our ton trucks. Um, I got with uh, W.A. Jones, where we usually do our business, and um, was trying to get a, a plastic ones like we had uh, previously bought a couple years ago. Uh, they seem to hold up good, but uh, they no longer make them. Uh, they make the stainless steel ones, which is actually cheaper than the plastic ones. Um, $5,600 for the eight-foot box stainless one installed. 
and uh, 6,500 for the nine foot three <coughs> box, uh, foot box installed and hooked up and everything. So it'll be a bigger asset for us as some of my men don't have and ladies don't have their CDL license and they could uh, drive that truck um, without having and uh, it's just a lot easier to get into a lot of the tighter spots with that one ton than it is the bigger dump trucks. And that's about all I got for that uh, the street business. Just have a question there, Lenny. You, you'll be putting another map in the paper this year for the leaf pickup? Yeah. 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 Similar um, we did like we did last year, Wes. <laughs> right now it's just hit and miss, but um, when we get going you know, full force, we'll start on the one side of town uh, as what we choose and uh, work our way accordingly. And uh, it seemed to work out good last year, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, in park business, uh, we've been, uh, we got all the signs up, of course, and um, I got with the uh, contractor and he's going to be pouring the disc, uh, disc golf pads Monday, starting Monday. Um, just been doing a lot of pressure washing underneath the pavilions, cleaning up the areas. And uh, we did a little bit of more painting on Manitow Mountain, just kind of brightening things up and uh, maintaining what we have. That's about it. Yeah, I think it bears mentioning we had a park board meeting just before this meeting and a week ago, uh, relative to the disc golf course. Uh, that's a Again, that's a pretty tight space out here, and it's a shared space. We've got the Little League involved out there. We've got disc golfers. We've got anybody up there in the park area. That It's a shared area, so we wanted to make sure we had all of our problems worked out in kinks before setting anything in concrete, so to speak. So we met with the Little League uh, last, about a week ago, and... Uh, discovered we uh, we in fact had uh, uh, what was it four holes four that holes that was questionable questionable and uh, in uh, discussing it with the little league they've got an area that they use out there for parking where we have two uh, two holes plus they do some practicing with their kids when their diamonds aren't available and such so uh, we're, it was agreed that we would uh, let the Little League uh, put two of those holes out of play when they're using the area. And that way no cars will be in jeopardy nor any kids be in, in jeopardy of, of an issue. And uh, a similar thing will be done with the, uh, the basket that was at the bottom of the sledding hill. Uh, again, shared space. When the sledding is going on out there, that hole will be put out of the uh, out of play. So all in all, we're, uh, we're feeling pretty good about it now, aren't we? Yeah, and, and doing that, we're just going to uh, basically redo the basket as far as uh, we're going to pull it up and put a sleeve down in the ground and a pin. That way, when you get ready to pull it up, you just pull it out, put the, pull the pin, pull the, pull the basket out, whole basket out, and then put a, a cap over the existing pipe itself. That way, uh, there's no question of anybody playing there. Or and and for you know, we won't have to be the ones making that decision. We're leaving that to the little league. Yeah. And and a signage will stay as such that when there's other yeah. activities going on there, those two holes will be out of play. And and they said, you know, it's not a case where we would have something out of play for a week. It's more like a night, a day. A day. Yeah. So they can be in charge of pulling it and putting it back. And Dave Clark said they would be more than happy to do that. Yep. So. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. A couple things with money for you. I saw that the striping was done on Main Street on Sunday. Yep. That yeah, looks good. You know, I don't know. Not everyone would even notice it was done. They hadn't been yeah, done. We, got a, we still got a couple spots to uh, some handicap uh, stuff to put down and um, a couple lines to put up in front of webs. But right. that's going to be a while. But uh, we got a little bit of a. Uh, racing to do that got a little commo a little commotion or somebody uh, kind of dropped the ball on something but it, uh, he's going to make it right with us and okay. get it taken care of so 
I still got a little bit of uh, curb work to do painting wise, and, but yeah, it looks yeah. a lot better. Yeah. The curb Thank work you. he's talking about it will be the finishing stages of the 9th and Main Street Park. Yeah. Uh, there will be no parking, uh, it'll be similar to across the street at the courthouse. There'll be no parking there at, at uh, Main Street wrapped around 9th Street all the way down 9th, so there'll be no parking right there in front of the park on Main and no parking on the side of the park down 9th Street that will be left over. Okay. And the last question I have is sort of tied into what when, uh, Harry Webb was in. Are there, you say it would be nice if all the benches and the whole city were all, all the same. Uh, uh, are there benches in the parks? Are there, I think they get heavy there, there, are, there are wooden benches. Okay. And yes. How do, do we make those or buy those if you know? We, we bought them or, or we've made them. We just get the material and that's what uh, okay. a guy that works full time out there does in the winter uh, is he, he builds the picnic tables as such in the benches. Okay. Now are you talking about the city park or the 9th and Main Street? No, no, the city park. City park, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to, if we were tying everything together, make everything look the same, I thought I was wondering what they have at the city parks. Yeah, but there's I could go look with wood benches, wood picnic tables. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Lenny? Thank you, sir. Good work. You bet. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving along the uh, area planning commission, Karen. <coughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Late hours, right? <laughs> the area <coughs> planning commission has met twice since our last meeting. We met on August the 28th, which was the evening after our last meeting. And then again on Monday, September the 25th, which was last week. The, after the normal old business and the rest of the agenda, our evening was to uh, go over the ordinances that had been previously written by, by the commissioners to uh, foresee the possibility of wind energy conversation or conversion, excuse me, uh, system in Fulton County uh, that had been made many years ago. So we went through each one of those ordinances, of which there were 37, and proposed what we thought might be a help or a hindrance. We had a large, uh, a large crowd that evening, and we had lots of, uh, of uh, lots of interest, and uh, so the meeting went long as people discuss each one of these items. I'll just briefly read this uh, so you have an idea of what was or what what it entails. Uh, the purpose of, of the wind energy <coughs> system would be to facilitate the provision of wind energy conversion systems to the residents and businesses of Fulton County, Fulton County, excuse me, minimize adverse visual effects of WEX, which is the wind energy con conversion <clears throat> facilities through careful design and siting standards. Encourage the location of WEX in non-residential areas through performance standards and incentives. Avoid potential damage and to and damage to adjacent properties from wax failure through structural standards and setback requirements. As I said, there were 37 of these ordinances um, and it applied to absolutely everything pertaining to the possibilities of Fulton County obtaining wind conversion. So we spent a, a, a lot of time on that, came to what we thought was possibly a resolve, but tabled it at the end for further discussion at our September meeting, uh, which was last evening. Uh, so we basically went through all 37 again and uh, pretty much came up to with what we had the first evening once again we had lots of lots of input from the from county residents and uh, at this point uh, we're almost ready to I believe submit what we might make to the changes in the 1991 uh, formation of the wind energy conversation conversion system I'm sorry um, so that's where we are with that and that pretty much took our whole evening a long one well, 
any any idea of uh, when this will all culminate into uh, at this Moving point in time, forward. after we make our recommendation to the commissioners, they look at, at the ordinances that we have changed and what changes we've made. They either can say yay or nay to what we have submitted. If they agree with what we have, then they will uh, approve those ordinances. If not, they'll come back to the Area Planning Commission once again and we'll have to go through them again. But it's a start. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Goodman, uh, not here, of course. Uh, FEDCO group did meet. Uh, there was some uh, uh, general discussions about uh, the completion of the 9th and Main Street Park. There was some discussions about uh, uh, the uh, opportunities that we were, we've been uh, negotiating with with our people from Peoria. Both, uh, uh, Mr. Boley and others, uh, and that pretty much consumed most of the meeting time. Uh, things are moving forward. Okay. The uh, park board, Mason's not here. I just gave you a little update on the park board. Redevelopment commission, Terry's not here. BZA and Council on Aging. Marty, no. you're up. Uh, I'm not used to going this quick. Does that mean I get like the time of four or five different <laughs> ones? It sounds like Sarah's ready to go. So <laughs> <laughs> you might have to go first. <laughs> 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 tick tock, tick tock. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll do the Council on Aging first. Uh, we met yesterday. Um, Transpo has uh, hired. Uh, three new drivers one is now driving has been for a couple of weeks another one in training as we speak and um, just a, a little tidbit for you 25 percent of the trips that transpo takes are taking people to and from work which i thought was really yes yeah. 25 percent uh, so trip wow. numbers are down just a little bit uh, now for the year but the revenue is up a little bit over a hundred dollars and that is the result of the rate change um, don't have anything to contribute uh, or, or to attribute the lower rides other than maybe the weather I don't know but they didn't really have a handle on that uh, from a RSDP standpoint, they had a, they were on their trip to Cape Cod when the storm hit the northeast and they had to turn around and come back. So that trip has been rescheduled for sometime in October. Not sure uh, when that date is. But, uh, uh, they're, they're, they are going back and the other thing that I would mention we've had a couple of extra meetings this month because uh, there is a committee of us that are redoing the personnel uh, policy handbook and uh, we had our last meeting uh, with the revisions we are going to be getting uh, that submitted to Andy for review and uh, <laughs> he doesn't know that yet probably There's <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so we are redoing and looking at the handbook uh, zoning BZA meets tomorrow night uh, an interesting schedule uh, there are four items on the agenda uh, one is for uh, just steps at a deck out at the lake one is for a uh, new house being built out at the lake uh, one for a freestanding sign that they want to make a little bit bigger than what is normally allowed and the fourth one is the uh, pilot uh, again is coming because uh, they want to build their billboard a little bit bigger and a little bit higher well 20 feet higher I mean quite a bit higher 
than the uh, ordinance allows, but they've done a site testing coming from both ways on 31, and they've determined that it needs to be a little bit bigger from from that standpoint. So be sure they get a locate for the gas line. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. Make sure NIBSCO knows where they're putting Yeah, I was Nibsco going to say they did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. Yes, they did. It wasn't their fault. Right. No. Yeah. Uh, that concludes my report, unless there are questions. Another <laughs> question I have, Marty, is do you recall where <coughs> Sally's by the Shore ended up with their um, request for temporary? they were supposed to be building a building and all of that where did that all end up that uh, ended with a five year continuance so they did get it to, for five more years on top of their three so a total of eight <coughs> five okay. additional years i'm sorry five additional years or two more five additional for where they're at right now is that what yeah, you see, currently, right now, the way they're situated, the um, tax revenue is not. They, there is no tax revenue. Correct. Because there's not a, a permanent structure there. It's a trailer. Okay. Anything else for Marty? Thanks, <coughs> Marty. Mm -hmm. um, Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center, Chase. <laughs> Chase, are you down there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here now. Yeah. Uh, the one uh, main thing I wanted to point out with the animal shelter, um, we're having an open house on October 8th from 1 to 4 p.m. for the uh, new building that we put up. Oh, we that's up October the 8th, you say? October 8th, yep, uh, 1 to 4. Okay. And um, we ended up getting our kennels, uh, the cats and dogs and stuff, to do kennels and stuff came in maybe two weeks ago and we're going to have someone put that together and have our open house. So. And then for the solid waste, the recycling center shipped 102.4 100, tons of recyclables with a value of 9,643.80. Um, for the month of July 2017, County Line Landfill received 33,622.16 tons of waste in 20 working days for a daily average of 1,681 tons per day. Fulton County accounted for 4,034 tons. The rest of Indiana contributed 29,584 tons. There was 3.25 tons of out-of-state trash collected. And the district host fee for the month was $45,391.69. The county host fee for the month of July was $14,793.81. So far, they've sold a total of 2,155 orange bags, of which 1,012 were purchased by city residents and 1,143 were purchased by county residents. They've collected $1,586 for disposal of bulk items. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last meeting or not, but the tractor ended up selling the tractor to a farmer in North Carolina for 22000 Oh my gosh. And, uh, North Carolina, huh? Yeah. Wow. He came up and got it. Picked it up. On August 4th, actually. <clears throat> and the last thing would be, um, <coughs> received a quote from the highway department to asphalt the back parking lot, um, where they have sewn. The quote includes the highway department providing labor and equipment to do the job. We would be getting the asphalt at the highway department's cost. We would need approximately 234 tons at $67 per ton, which would be approximately $15,672. Um, if approved, they'd be able to get that started in about a week or two, which um, the solid waste did end up approving that. The Animal Adoption Center, how did the, uh, how'd the circus downtown go? You know, it was okay for the first year, I guess. I mean, I think that they, I don't know, really nothing to expect because they weren't sure. So it was, it was okay. They had some adoptions, did they? They had a few Good. adoptions. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yep. Any questions for Chase? No, but I would say follow up. There were a lot of people downtown that day. 
with the combination of the farmers market and the pet parade and all that. But a lot more things going on downtown than it normally is on a Saturday morning. It was nice to see. So, I mean, however often they do it, but yeah. bring more interest in there. Okay, coming down. Okay. <coughs> um, tree board and EMS, Brian. Tree board met a couple times this month. The first one was on September seventh. Uh, one of the topics was the, the financials, uh, end of the years, uh, how much money is still left for whatever trees need to come down, be removed or trimmed, and also whatever trees we need to plant, uh, while well, we still can in the next few next month or so. Uh, so. You, Communicated with Shada, got the information, and so we try certainly try not to go over budget, but also need to think about emergency damage and things like that, and working with Lenny with all the, you know, the emergency things. There was some discussion about uh, trees in the tree lawn at the the new Ninth and Main Park. Uh, initially, they weren't going to put trees there, then they're talking about putting trees. But it, the mayor talked with the uh, the people involved with that. Whatever they're doing, they're, they're doing that prior to it coming to the city. So if there are trees going in there, it won't be coming out of the city's budget. So yeah, that'd be good. TBD, TBD. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, to discuss the planting of new trees, where they need to go uh, to replace some of the ones that come out. So they're still, and they're working with the uh, the last batch of trees for removal and pruning for this year. Uh, new ones are coming now are probably going for next year because of the budget and everything else. Uh, and lastly, for that meeting, they talked more about the, uh, the Tree City application uh, as well as the, the matter that came before the council tonight with the revision of the order. Uh, that revision. Uh, next meeting was on the 21st. And the more, for the most part, it was re finalizing the, uh, that packet of information that Ms. Andrew talked to us tonight about. Uh, so, okay. so that was basically it for those two. Uh, and then the uh, EMS board uh, will meet and uh, next quarterly meeting will be in October. So I'll be able to report for that if I go to work. Any questions for uh, Councilman Fitzwater? Okay. Uh, Councilman Garrett's not here this evening, neither is Derek, so we'll just move on to the downtown partnership with Sarah Reese. <coughs> Boy, didn't Woo! think we were ever going to get there, did you? <laughs> the good news is most of my stuff's already been covered, so I'll be quick. <laughs> um, I am Sarah Reese, the Executive Director for the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Um, as you mentioned, we're excited to see the progress at Webb's. Um, they were one of two Rochester recipients of some grant funds through the Ochre office through what used to be the historical tax credit. Um, so we're excited to see that continue. Uh, work on the back wall of the former Bailey's building is set to begin October 2nd. Um, so once that back wall is repaired and restored, they will be able to start work on the roof. Um, the group that is taking over that property that has purchased that property and then the brewing group um, are pretty determined to ensure that both the wall and the roof are repaired before winter sets in they don't want to endure another um, winter of damage to the interior of the building because of the issues with the wall and roof so we're hopeful that that will continue um, a little food for thought with your seated conversation um, there was a request for $10,000 from seeded funds for that project that was made by Terry Lee. That request was denied. Um, they were told that the funds are not there um, to support that project. So for what it's worth, you know, that's food for thought. Uh, we have our monthly board meeting um, tomorrow afternoon and I anticipate us approving four projects in our focus area that will total about $13,000 in facade grant funds, um, which is about $26,000 of private investment in, on top of that $13,000 that we would be awarding. So um, nice chunk of change going into downtown Rochester, Rochester improvements. So we're excited for that. Uh, we have started our strategic planning sessions for 2018. We are once again working with Stephen Ray of the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Commission to develop our strategic plan for 2018. So um, 
I'm sure that the invitation will be extended to uh, Mayor Denton as well as any council members that would care to participate in that to keep lines of communication open. Um, we do have a couple of grants that we're looking to apply for that we're kind of investigating. Harry mentioned one of them, and that's the facade renovation program that's um, funded through the Office of Community and Rural Affairs. That's a potential for about $500,000, um, as he mentioned, for 10 to 15 specific projects. We're also intending to apply for the Downtown Enhancement Grant. Um, right now we are looking to determine the grant cycle is open now. Um, those applications have to be in by November. I'm not specific on the date at the moment, but um, funds would be distributed in 2018 if we apply for that grant cycle. Um, they in the past have done more than one grant cycle per year, but it's not a guarantee. So if we don't pursue it this grant cycle, we could potentially be looking at the end of 2018 before we would be, a, we would be applying for that grant. And those funds are going to be used for the wayfinding and gateway signage for the city. So um, I am working with Harry Webb, who is our design chair, and then also John Little, who has been involved in that whole process of signage for quite some time um, to kind of determine what we feel like our best course of action is of when we apply for that. Uh, the group of MBA students from IU Kokomo that has been working on the leakage analysis has primarily finished their report. There's some minor tweaks that need to be done. Um, we anticipate them giving their presentation at the next FEDCO meeting. Um, that was the audience that was determined that they would be presenting to, um, but we're just waiting on a confirmation that they will be presenting that there. And that will help to guide our um, business traction efforts knowing more detailed of where we're leaking money to other communities. So we're excited for that input. Um, as far as events, Shada mentioned, we are planning to have Boothfest once again this year. That will be on October 31st from 4.30 to 5.30 for our downtown businesses. Um, I am hoping to have a contest, a costume contest this year. As Shada gracefully said, we are having some transition, meaning that my promotions chair has resigned her position. So um, I'm hopeful, but I am only one person. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. We're also working out the final details of our Santa parade and breakfast with Santa um, to, so those dates are still to be determined. And lastly, we have three board seats to fill. So um, two of them will be um, opening at the end of the year just because of um, terms expiring um, and then the third four to, to replace the promotions chair. So if you know of anyone who has an interest in downtown, please send them my way. <laughs> That's all I have if you have questions. Uh, good report. Yeah, for page report, I'd like to mention very quickly for the council's benefit since uh, you went through the uh, Van Dyne situation and the Bailey building process there. It's, there's right, there was a request made to, uh, by Terry for some seated funds and it was turned down uh, a couple other avenues he's going to pursue for that, those monies. But uh, that whole experience uh, brought us to a, a meeting a week ago of the uh, many folks from the Downtown Partnership, the Redevelopment Commission, FEDCO, the Chamber, and a couple of us from the city. And <coughs> in the meeting we discussed the fact that uh, when we have somebody who shows interest in Rochester, it'd be nice to have something, uh, a packet of some kind, a handout uh, from the city, whatever, from, from all these groups, uh, starting out with a cover <coughs> letter from the city, and then a page, a one-page explanation of each of the groups, and the things, the incentives that could be available from each group. And, process that uh, you know just a short not not war and peace but something that points out how you go about approaching some of these incentives if you're interested in investing in our downtown and then it ends with a final page saying for further information please contact this liaison person with the name telephone number and uh, email address that way we would pull it all together and not only do all the groups have a pack that they can look at and see what everybody's doing. But you got an individual interested in uh, spending their money in Rochester investing, they know who to go to, they don't have 12 people to talk to. Uh, that liaison person becomes their 
mom's best friend throughout the, the process and takes them from cradle to grave. Uh, we thought there was a lot of value to that. The assignment was that everybody was to go back and by this Friday have a one pager back to us here and then we'd have another meeting and refine it a bit and get it format like that. Uh, I had shared with him that I'd got an interesting call from Mayor Denny Spinner in Huntingburg. He had read one of the EP -E publications about the Van Dyne mission uh, with Argus and now with Rochester and saw some of the things that were involved with Rochester. He called to say, how do you pull all that together? You know, Huntingburg's about, about the same size as Rochester and we run up against the... So I told him, I said, well, we're still working through that and we're, we're new at this. This is the process we're going to take. He says, you get that put together, send it to me. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a situation that uh, we're not alone. There are people still pulling things like that together. So we're going to bring it better now. It'll be easier for somebody like a Van Dyne to come in and see what's available. Good idea. Thank you, Sarah. Any, anything else for Sarah? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Nice job. Okay, uh, just a couple of things before we get to the resolutions. Uh, Derek uh, wasn't here tonight to uh, give his report, but one of the things he was going to mention, he is uh, going to the Leadership Academy now. Uh, Andy just finished his last year from the Leadership Academy, and he shot, she shot. Derek is uh, the attendee from the city this year. The other thing is uh, the first of the month we had the interaction management uh, uh, supervisor training for all of our uh, superintendents and uh, our two chiefs and uh, Shada went through it also on uh, having discussions with your subordinates, how to document uh, our disciplinary process, steps. You were just there to, to, to <laughs> chide from you. the back. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, going through, you know, here's, you need to have a discussion with somebody about an issue. Here's how you formulate it. Here's, a, here's what's expected of uh, the result as far as documentation and follow up, follow up, follow up. Uh, just, just give them some tools, folks, some tools that uh, we, haven't, we haven't had. We haven't seen this at this level. It's something you do in industry. We haven't done it in this valley before. And, uh, I think the folks got some value out of it. Don't forget first aid. Training. Okay. Yes, we also had first aid training uh, this uh, this month also. And now everybody except the mayor knows how to do CPR. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay close to somebody who knows CPR. You know. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. But everybody's trained now. Yeah. We sent everybody through. Um, everybody received from the American Heart Association uh, first aid and CPR training. So all of the, with the uh, except for the golf, uh, we're actually going to do another training with them in December. Obviously, because of the season. Uh, Put me down. Yeah, and uh, and Mayor Ned <laughs> will be involved in that one as well because he uh, at the last minute said, "Oh, I can't change my appointment." And so because he's the mayor, we were nice and yeah. made an adjustment. Yeah. We're going to send him to the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's let's uh, take a look at uh, Ordinance 5-2017 and 2018 regarding the 2018 budget. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, read that ordinance. Can these be read by title only? Yeah, well, I don't know how long is I didn't look at it. Can we do it by title only? It's a couple pages. It's a damn issue to all three of them by her. Two of them by title only. Two of them by title only. Yeah. So then the third one we retain for reading in its entirety. Because that's, that's right. what the No, you, you could do all three by title only. I just mean you can't. Because you can't that's do right. We can't do the third one. Right. So, so you could do them both. Two so the answer right. is yes, we could do them by title only. Yes. Right. yes. You can do them by title only. <laughs> Okay, I would entertain a, a, a motion then to read 5-2017 uh, by title only for the first reading. So moved. And a second. second. Moved by Fitzwater, seconded by Thompson. Those in favor, raise your right hand. 4-0. Marty, could you read the ordinance, please? Yes. 
ordinance of resolution for appropriations and tax rates. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I would uh, entertain then a motion to have the second reading by title only. So moved. Second. Moved by Smith, seconded by Fitzwater. Uh, those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, would you please read have the second reading by title only? Yes, and I apologize the first time. Uh, ordinance number 05-2017. Ordinance of or resolution for appropriations and tax rates. Okay. We'll have to save the third reading for our next meeting. Moving on then to uh, ordinance uh, 6 2017 2018 salary. Uh, I would entertain a motion to have the first reading by title only. So moved. Moved by Fitzwater, seconded by uh, Karen. Those in favor signify it's 4 0. Okay, Marty, if you would, by title only, 6 2017. Ordinance number 06 2017, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, Indiana, for the year 2018. Okay, any, uh, any discussion? I would entertain a motion for the second reading of 06-2017 by title only. So second. Motion by Thompson, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor, signify 4-0. Marty, you're, you're on there, partner. Ordinance number 06-2017, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the city of Rochester, <coughs> Indiana for the year 2018. Okay, uh, moving along to Ordinance 7-2017, I'd entertain a motion to read that ordinance for the first time by title only. Karen made the motion. Second. So I'll second. Marty seconded. Okay, this is 07-2017, 2018 elected official salary. Can I vote for the motion? Yes, I uh, need a vote for the motion. Yes, 4-0. Seven days, 2017, uh, by title only. Please first. Or, ordinance 07 days, 2017, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the city of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2018, is approved by in IC 36 days, 4 days, 7 days, 2. Any discussion? I would entertain a motion for the second reading of 07-2017. Second. Moved by Thompson, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? 4-0. Are you please the second reading? Ordinance 07-2017, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the City of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2018 as approved by IC 36-4-7-2. Okay, that leaves us with a resolution. Which you can pass tonight. Yes, we, <laughs> we can handle that tonight. That's, that needs one reading. Uh, resolution 09-2017, petty cash modification. I'd entertain a motion for the reading of that resolution. So moved. Marty moved. Karen seconded. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. 4 0. Would you please read resolution 09 2017 petty cash modification, Marty? Resolution 09 2017, a resolution to increase the petty cash amounts. Whereas the city of Rochester desires to increase the petty cash amounts as expenses such as certified mailings and recording fees have increased and sometimes fall outside regular claim cycle, whereas the following petty cash increases are necessary to accommodate increased expenses. Police department from $20 to $100. Clerk treasurer's office from $20 to $100. Water department from $50 to $100. Wastewater Department from $50 to 
All petty cash money is retained and dispersed as the clerk treasurer's at the clerk treasurer's office except the police department. Whereas the increased petty cash amounts will be transferred from operating cash accounts to petty cash accounts. Now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Rochester, Indiana that petty cash amounts be increased and transferred as itemized above. Any uh, discussion <clears throat> on resolution uh, 09-2017? Move to pass. Marty made the motion to pass. Seconded by Thompson. Uh, those in favor signify by raising your right hand. And it is 4 0. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how well we can operate. How well we can do on 20 bucks. With no, uh, no further business on the agenda, I'd like to thank you all for hanging in for a long meeting tonight and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Fitzwater moved. Thompson seconded. Those in favor, it's 4-0. Thank you. 4-2.